So concerns have been raised about the high level of cesarean section in the United States. We have one of the highest, not the highest, but one of the highest rates of cesarean section in the industrialized world. Uh, the most recent data from 2009 uh, has the United States at 32.9% uh, of all births end up in a cesarean. The difficulty with that is that there's no evidence whatsoever that a third of mothers are high risk or certainly sufficiently high risk to merit a cesarean. When people have looked at this increasing cesarean rate, it's often argued that it's either because of demographic changes among mothers or mothers' requests for them. So let's look at this piece by piece. It's argued that mothers are getting older, and older mothers are at risk, higher risk, and so they require cesareans more often. Sort of true, except for the part that's false. The false part is this, that the increase in the average age of mothers in the United States ended around, 19, around 2003, and the cesarean rate has continued to increase at roughly the same pace, slowed down a little bit in the last couple of years. It's said that there's more twin births because mothers are using artificial reproductive technologies, so they're having more twins, and that's resulting in more cesareans because often there's cesareans because of twins. True, except that around 2002 and 2003, that peaked in the United States as well. As people got better at uh, assisted reproductive technologies, we don't have the number of multiples that we did before, and that's leveled off, and the cesarean rate has continued to increase. It's argued that those cesareans are going up because babies are getting bigger. That's not true at all. Babies are actually getting smaller. Even if you're looking at singleton births to avoid the issue of twins, um, the, the average size of babies has decreased. And it's partly decreased because the injection of early cesareans has resulted in more prematurity. So the final one that's, that's laid on mothers is they're asking for it. That this is simply doctors responding to demands by mothers. And that would be a very powerful argument if it had actual any basis in fact. Um, the only basis in fact is this. There are clearly a handful of mothers, a very small proportion of mothers, who want a cesarean for fear of childbirth, for fear of labor, whatever. But that's a tiny fraction of the number of mothers we're talking about. When we did a national survey of mothers, we found it to be less than 1%. So most of the reasons we cite for the rise in cesareans um, either are not true at all in the case of birth weight, or have not been true for the last few years as the rate has continued to increase. The question has been raised, what's the concern with the high rate of cesareans? If maybe 33% isn't even high enough. Maybe it should be 100% cesareans among some. But the other side of it is this. Once you pass a certain point, and there's not a fixed number that everybody agrees on, but oftentimes in the area of about 15%, what you find is the outcomes don't improve any for, anymore. Uh, when you look at it across countries, um, those higher rates of cesarean have no actual benefit for mothers and babies for that matter. But when you start subjecting mothers at low risk to major abdominal surgery, you're in introducing interventions they don't need. And then what we found was mothers were much more likely with planned cesareans to be rehospitalized in the first 30 days, in the first 90 days, and up to one year. Why would we be surprised by that? You do major surgery on people who don't need surgery and you raise risks of infection that they wouldn't have experienced otherwise. And so the point is not that cesareans are not done well and people don't care about how they do them. They do them with great care. But the reality is doing surgery on people who don't need surgery introduces a set of risks that you don't have to encounter. I don't doubt the sincerity of clinicians who um, believe strongly in trying to do more cesareans. Uh, the issue is how they got to that point, where they came from and how they got to that point. And if you look at the nature of their training, their training is all about risk. And the consequences of that, uh, their behaviors will uh, treat mothers as if they're all about to have a disaster occur. And, and they don't go home at night saying, ha ha ha, I fooled all those people. They really believe it. They honestly believe it. And it's that honest disagreement that I find um, makes it both possible to talk to people and difficult to get people to change. So if you're thinking, where can we make the change, the change would have to come at the training stage, um, both in terms of maybe recruiting some different kinds of people whose greatest skills weren't necessarily their score in organic chemistry, but um, had the kind of compassion and empathy that we want in a birth provider, um, but also change the way they're trained. There's a wonderful moment in one of the many documentaries now um, around childbirth where uh, several young obstetricians are asked, have you ever seen a normal birth? And the three of them sort of look at each other and say, well, no. And what does that mean for our system and the way we train uh, the people that we put so much care into?